Hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? Hopefully everybody's having a great weekend and had a great week as well. Uh, so today I just want to make it real brief for everybody and uh, I want to guys want to give you guys a a good tip to look forward to today uh, when it comes to the futures and um, how some things are going to be moving and, and changing and rotating um, and, and all those fancy words, right? Basically, what I'm trying to say is give you guys a uh, a head start into something that can potentially lead to the bottom of the markets uh, and also to the next leg down and what are going to be some indicators, okay? Uh, what to focus on. I know a lot of you guys are out there focusing on your SMAs and your EMAs and waiting to touch so-and-so. Others are waiting for the news to get a little bit worse and saying that the market is going to come crashing more down, maybe another 15 to 20% and all this stuff, right? Whatever the case may be, let the chart do the talking. And once it breaks, it breaks. Whether we go up or down, it's that's the direction we follow no matter what. Okay, Always remember that. First and foremost, follow the chart and the way that it's going to react versus accepting the news in a biased direction because that's what's going to you know, ruin your guys' weeks and day trades and all the above. So uh, first things first, I want to point out uh, forward slash yes. I want to let you guys know that we did bounce off last week here. We did close down on the bottom here. Uh, we do have this nice little uh, channel down, channel down still. Uh, there, there's no uh, no sign of reversal just yet uh, with well, with this trend alone. OK, so we did bounce off this demand 4150, 4140. Uh, it's kind of acting as a demand. So if we start breaking down 4150, 4140, the next level to look for, guys, um, it, it's this below this 4K. I know some of you guys are probably looking for 4K, but there's no structure at 4K. The actual structure begins here at this 3940 all the way to 3962 area. So that's the level that you're going to look for um, if we do come crashing down uh, this week. It's a very volatile week. So we may experience the OPEX, uh, the OPEX and the contracts, they, they expire this week um, for SPX, uh, the futures and all that good stuff. If you guys don't know what it is, please go search it out. Okay, don't take me for my word, but please go search it out. So usually around those times, uh, the market tends to be red uh, the whole week because things are expiring, okay? Uh, on top of that, we have FOMC talking about interest rates uh, that they are going to increase this week. What, like I said earlier, don't get biased on any type of news. Things can change real fast. Okay, let the chart do the talking. If we are breaking this specific level, it's going to come down here. Okay, can it go further? Of course. I'm just giving you guys a target for the week. I don't want to do anything. Uh, further just because we haven't broken yet so it, it's not a big issue i'm not going to come here and give you guys every single level on the bottom because we're not there yet if this is the case if we start coming down right here and then we close down here by the end of the week this is where i'm going to buy, buy some call positions um, in the market and i'm going to try to find uh, some good supports in the market so on thursday i think i'm gonna come back and make another video to just do a recap as to what i'm going to buy for friday if we come uh, into this level, okay? So that I'm gonna do a recap on Thursday, so please make sure to look out for that, right? If all else fails, I'm probably just gonna post a chart up and, and let you guys know exactly what I'm gonna be buying. All right, so this is the uh, forward slash ES SPY. Um, those are the two levels that are very, very important to understand uh, this week. Another thing that I wanna point out is the four hour chart. Um, yeah, I've been I've been posting this chart everywhere and just kind of been point posting this supply up here and the demand that was here at one point. Okay. So this uh 42 uh 4250 level to the 4260 is a very, very important level to uh get over. If we can't reclaim this specific piece, then most likely we're just gonna stay bearish. Okay. Once we go above this level, 4280, and then that 40 that 43, there's gonna be a lot more confirmation for this to go up and then your target would be way up here. So you're just gonna target the top of supply. 
once we can reclaim this demand on the four hour, then we should be okay to go up. Otherwise, it's still looking a bit bearish. So giving you guys two different levels, all right? So this is the level to go back up into supply and reclaim it as demand. But this is also the same level can, that you can reject and come back down to this bottom. Once we break this bottom, it's going to lead even further. And then that's where you get that 4K. So these are one, two, three, four uh, levels that are very, very important to understand. And how it's going to happen, I don't know. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as we're, we're above, we're bullish, we're below, we're bearish. Very simple, right? So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So that's forward slash yes. Now, one thing I want you guys to see as well is that gold. I know there's been a lot of stuff with war. And uh, since we've been trending down, there's a lot of things that have been changing. A lot of stocks been, you know, basically trending down to these bottoms. And, you know, other stocks are like barely hanging on. And some are at all time highs and things like that. So there's a lot of mixture and there's a lot of balance all across the board. But we do have one thing. We do have gold. Gold was in this range for such a long time. And just to show you guys around this 1834 to this bottom of 1745. It traded range for such a long time. And then once the new year began, right here, uh, this, these, uh, these candles right here, the, the war catalyst came at the same time. Once that happened, well, we started driving up. And as you can see, the market uh, hit that demand level at the same time that this gold hit basically this all-time high level. Gold is considered a safe asset, and that is where the investors are putting their money at. But once this slows down, it's telling you basically that they're taking profits. Where, where is that money going to go to? Look at it like this, right? You just made tons of money here, right? Uh, well, you load it up, and you made tons of money. So you have all this margin of profits, right? Where are you going to put that money at? So if this continues this week, okay, this is why I'm telling you guys that I am most likely going to buy the dip in the market. If this stays down here and it doesn't fill this wick, okay, above this piece, if it doesn't go anywhere like this, if gold does not end this by the end of the week, I am most likely going to buy the bottom in the market, wherever it's at. And I just gave you guys the, uh, the dip buy level where I'm going to buy it. If this thing drops down here, I'm going to buy it. If we stay inside here, I'm going to buy it. Okay. The reason for that is because gold acts as a safe asset, meaning that investors are, are fearing where the market is going to lead to. If they, if they come out of gold, that means that there is no more fear, fear of the investments in their portfolios. Therefore, the VIX, I'm going to show you guys now, that the characteristics here are changing. Okay. The characteristics here are building uh, and, and they're changing. So no specific level here, no specific level can tell you that there's more fear than others. All it is, is that when this thing goes up green with volatility, like, like these huge green candles and this big red candle and this huge green, huge green, huge green, then that'll tell you that there's fear in the market. But as of right now, we're kind of just going sideways. It's not really, it's not really pulling in one direction the most. What is really showing, it's a lot of red. The red candles, because we keep gapping up, and the market keeps gapping down, okay? So when this starts to cool off, I will know that the fear is driving down, okay? It's not increasing. Therefore, I have two indicators in the market, gold, sell-off, and VIX, cool-off, to tell me that it's okay to buy the dip in the market. So basically, what I'm going to look for is buy some good leaps, buy some good shares, um, long-term, of course, you guys decide whatever you guys want to buy. I'm not here to give you that financial advice. You guys do your own due diligence. But also know that uh, when it comes to the short-term call positions, that's what I'm going to get myself into. I don't care what the world is saying out there. I want to I want to know what the charts are doing and how they're moving and what the characteristics are going to be like. As long as I have these two indicators for me, that's all I really need because that's what this market is moving based off of. Okay. Interest rates, yes, it's all down already. A lot of it may be priced in already. Inflation, we all know that there's lots of inflation. We know that prices are going up. We know oil is going up, okay? So let's talk about oil. Oil hit this huge level up here with 130.5. I know a lot of you guys are struggling for, uh, 
uh, gas and there's a lot of memes out there that are being uh, posted and talked about and all kinds of stuff, right? So oil, oil is not going to move Microsoft. Oil is not going to move Apple. It, it's definitely not going to move uh, Walmart. It's not going to affect Etsy, NVIDIA, or INTC. Okay, let's make that very clear. Oil is moving because of the war. There's a lot of supply and demand chain issues that occur that has nothing to do with MU, Shop, Roku, Cat, things like that, all right? The volatility in itself for oil will be a lot more different. And yes, it's going to affect the market, but it's not going to move it in a negative way, all right? So in the beginning, yes, it had a lot of... Uh, a lot of volatility and it created a lot of momentum all across the board. Uh, people started fearing because now these levels, this is the last time we hit a recession back in 08 to 09, if I'm not mistaken. And this is as high as it went. But as it hit, it just came down just as fast. So I'm not saying that this is the top for oil, but the structure for the supply is below all these levels, this 114. Okay, that level all the way down to this 93 is some good structure. Even if we can drop down to this uh, 85 uh, right here where we once uh, broke out from, that's this little yellow spot, uh, that'll be okay. But either way, there, there's a lot of volatility in oil. And this year is already showing that there's a slowdown. Okay, so the volatility already with what happened with the war, it's already priced in, it already in there. It's already in there now. It's the matter of, uh, you know, Biden and uh, the government and everybody else, whoever deals with OPEC, uh, will have to deal um, with the situations that arise. So does it look like a big short? I, I won't get in front of this. I, this is not something that I will trade, but it's something that I will have alerts on just so I can be aware of, okay? I'm not calling the top on oil. I'm not sitting here for that. I just want to give you guys a little more insights as to how it's going to move and how it's moving with the market. Okay. Meanwhile, we have forward slash NQ tech. Tech has a nice, uh, a nice chart that went to the top and it finally pulled back down. Okay. Um, this one has a lot more structure and there's a lot more uh, heavyweight in the market. This thing made it through COVID. Uh, this was the COVID and then this was the after COVID. Even with um, a lot of the volatility in the market, there was so much going on. Uh, there was, um, you know, the interest rates, there was just so much. But tech held its own. It, it basically gave the market some type of hope. And now we're still right here at this demand level. And like I said, once we drop on ES and then we drop on NQ right here, these are the levels that have structure and they have more demand. So this demand here is still strong in the market where we can potentially start seeing some type of bounces anywhere in these levels, okay? Um, but those are my signs, guys. These are my indications that the market is still healthy. I, I don't think that there's going to be like this crazy crash because it, it's, it's just trending down nice, okay? It's not like it's a, a huge crash like it was on COVID where this thing just dropped for, uh, what was it, about two months straight, and it was just like nonstop. Um, there were circuit breakers and there was huge gap downs and it, it was just intense. Uh, I actually experienced that, um, which was pretty awesome. But at the same time, it, it kind of sucked for a lot of the swing trade positions. But on the way up, people made tons of money. So, um, but that's that's my indication in the market, guys. Those are the one. Those are the two things that I'm going to look for um, for forward slash GC for gold to cool off. So we can get a proper uh, proper dip buy in the market. So we can get that indicator that says, hey, there's people leaving gold. There's investors walking away from gold and it's going to be a great dip buy. This week will be very volatile. And that's why I don't want to post many tickers that is going to be on the weekly watch list. Um, but I can assure you guys that day by day, you guys should take it that way and accept what the market gives you. Don't come in here thinking that it's, it's going to be one directional because it's been going up and down. So just like last week, I'm going to give you guys an example, right? Here we have basically uh, the opening on Sunday, right? 
And then look where we closed on Friday. Like we legit didn't really do much. We opened here and we closed here. Like that's not even a big move. We came down, we came back inside and then we closed right below. So the movement for the week wasn't even that aggressive. So it wasn't a directional move. It was just basically like a flat move, just saying that we ticked down just a bit more. That's all it was. So because of that, it's kind of difficult to provide a lot of great value um, when it comes to the weekly charts. Uh, but again, I want to show you guys that uh, keeping it very simple, always make sure you guys have PayPal on your list. I have tons of levels here for PayPal, but just know that if it goes above 100, it's going to be a long play all the way to this like 105 and 107. Make sure you have SQ. SQ looks like it might have found the bottom here. Okay, so anything above 100 is going to be calls, as you can see. I'm going to show you guys. You got bought up here. Got bought up there, here, and a nice wick here. And then this is where it broke down, but then it came back inside because of the earnings. And then it reclaimed it right here. So we're back at that same level. So it might be looking for uh, some good call positions here at this specific spot, All right? Between 96 and 100, it's gonna be a great dip buy. Anything below this 96, you don't want calls, all right? So that's PayPal and SQ. Make sure you guys have these on watch every single day. Uh, they have more reward versus risk to the top side. I, I think these these two stocks have so much value to provide uh, long term, uh, especially PayPal. And it's just, again, my opinion, guys, uh, you guys don't have to have these on your watch list every single day, but I definitely do. And if I can find a trade on these, I will. If the market is green uh, for some odd reason and it's super bullish, I'm going straight to PayPal and I'm buying it because it's most likely high probability that it'll have a green day no matter where it's at no matter what kind of setup it looks like no matter what the previous day looked like there's a probability and a high possibility that if the market is bullish paypal will have a nice green day okay so uh, i want to point those two out for you guys uh, that make more sense for me all right other than that guys please keep it very simple um xle is looking good Look for solar stocks as well to reverse. They've been reversing the past few weeks because of oil. Um, financials, XLF. Uh, XLF is still in a great spot as well. So look for JPM, BAC, uh, C. Uh, these are in great spots as well. If you guys check out the four hour, look at the previous uh, low. As you guys can see, I have my alerts here. Tons of alerts for uh, JPM. You guess uh, BAC as well. BAC right here, this 40 level. GS kind of held uh, this demand as well, this 327, 330. So nice little setup on there. Uh, C is probably the one that's right there at the demand. Uh, this would be a straight buy right here. Stop loss would be that 54, of course. Uh, very simple trades, but XLF looks like it's very healthy still. XLF did not collapse on the weekly time frame. And let me just show you. Here we go. Here's your demand that bounced up. Here's your demand. Here's your demand. And if we do break <clears throat> this 37 area, it'll probably continue back on up. So watch out for the financials guys to have a green week, um, depending on what the FOMC is gonna do. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to say, okay? Everybody's expecting the interest rates, um, you know, to be increased, but it's the feds you know we can never expect one thing always be ready for the next right so um but that's what's going on guys uh please make sure you guys uh watch gold okay watch uh es those levels down below give you guys only these simple levels because again this market moves like crazy and it's been gapping up it's been gapping down um tons of stuff going on in the market so remember to stay hedged uh i think if you're gonna hedge um grab some spy puts with some time and just let it ride because the selling pressure is still here. Okay. The sentiment is still here. That's bearish. There's nothing that says that it's going to be bullish just yet. All I did today was point out something very, very important for you guys to understand where and when it's going to start changing. Despite all the news, despite the sentiment, um, despite everything that's going on around the world, remember to allow the charts to lead you and not to give you any type of bias, all right? Play the play the support bounces, play the 
uh, resistance, short to tops, uh, play the pattern plays, but just understand to be careful when you're swing trading. Don't go too crazy. Don't go too heavy and only swing what you can handle. All right. So I'll leave you guys with that. I'm going to come back on Thursday and we're going to see where the market is at and hopefully gauge in into some swing plays on Thursday uh, to enter Friday. So we will enter on Friday some of those swing plays um, for the rest of the week. All right. So we'll see how all this turns out. Uh, we'll see the end results and we'll see what the Fed say. Other than that, guys, please be careful with your position sizing. Um, use the pre-market levels to help you and guide you and assist you throughout the week. Uh, don't look for nothing too crazy. Don't look for huge moves. Don't get, again, don't get biased. Don't get biased, please. Okay. Just because something is bearish doesn't mean it's going to stay bearish. Just because something looks bullish doesn't mean it's going to, you know, go automatically 100% bullish. All right. Follow the trend intraday and stick with it and stick to your lane. All right. So I'll leave you guys with that. Enjoy the knowledge. Enjoy um, uh, the alerts. OK. And stay aware. All right. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay green. And please, please, again, manage your risk. And accept the directional days. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one.